In Money Watch, the high number of coronavirus cases being reported in the U.S. is causing a severe shortage of eligible workers. More than 5.4 million new cases of COVID-19 were confirmed across the country just last week. In turn, the rising number of Omicron variant-related cases is causing a great American sick out. A recent CBS News article explores the, quote, hellacious worker shortages businesses are dealing with as the U.S. struggles to combat the spread of the variants. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News Money Watch reporter and author of the article, Amy Peakey. Hi, Amy. Uh, great to have you with us. So about how much of the U.S. workforce is currently unable to work because of the rapid rise in coronavirus infections? Yeah. Hey, Tanya. Thanks for having me on to talk about this. You know, right now, it's just a matter of estimates. We won't know more until the government comes out with some um, jobs data next month. But an economist at Capital Economics told me that he estimates there are about 5 million people at home sick at the peak of Omicron. Um, that they're not all workers. Um, some of those are, you know, parents, their kids. But um, overall, he thinks that's about 2 percent of the U.S. workforce. But I did speak with some other companies that are saying they're actually seeing a much higher percentage of their workers being out. I talked with the um, head of Stu Leonard's, which is a supermarket chain in the New York area, and he said last week he had 8% of his workers out sick. He said that's the most he's ever had. Um, and, you know, I asked him, well, what does that mean? You know, when you have that many workers out, what does that do to your business? He says, well, you know, honestly, we have to cut back. We can't keep all the products on the shelf that we normally would. And he gave me this example of crumb cake in his bakery. He said, you know, my baker, my head baker said, I make an amazing apple crumb cake, but when I have so many people out, I can't make it. All you're going to get is the regular crumb cake. So, you know, fewer choices for consumers. Um, so that's why in some cases you're seeing some shelves at supermarkets that are emptier than you might have seen, you know, six months ago, even a year ago. And you're seeing this phenomenon across industries. Is that right, Amy? That's right. I mean, we're seeing it in the airlines. I think everybody was aware of the airline cancellations that we saw over the holidays. Um, the Delta CEO said that the, he had a hellacious few weeks um, over the holidays with workers being out sick. Um, we're seeing it in hospitals, which is really where it's very serious. I mean, it's one thing if you don't get your crumb cake, but it's something very more serious, much more serious if you don't have enough healthcare workers to help people with COVID or suffering from other illnesses. So, um, you know, that's something that is very concerning. But yes, it's impacting all industries. It's not discriminating against you know anyone in particular. Um, it is also hitting the supply chain. Um, I talked with uh, the Consumer Brands Association, which represents um, consumer packaged goods, everything from toothpaste to cookies. And they said one factory, um, as part of their group, had to cut their production by 20 percent because of people being out sick due to uh, the COVID. To, to COVID. And we know that the supply chain was already feeling stress even before this latest wave of COVID sickouts. So that's that's certainly adding to it. And then, of course, we know that there was a tight label market even before this, right? There are more than 10 million job openings in the U.S., despite the fact that inflation is at a 40-year high. Um, so what is this sick out doing to our economic recovery? Is it being looked at as a short-term problem, which essentially it is, because most of these workers will be going back to work eventually, correct? That's correct. So, you know, the question is, how long is it going to last and how deep will it be? You know, I did speak with an economist who raised the uh, concern that this co could cause another recession or another slowdown. Um, I think that's the worst case scenario from what the economists are telling me. But it, it is a concern. It's a concern on a couple fronts. One is that when people get sick, um, you know, they're not earning money. Um, Gusto, which is a payroll provider, told me that service workers in New York City now have average hours of 21 hours a week. That's compared to 27 hours a week a year ago, back when there was even bef before we had a vaccine. So that means service workers in New York City, which has been one of the hardest hit areas, are earning less money. So that's one way that it could hit the economy is, you know, personal income could go down. But then you also have the supply chain. You have those issues and you have issues with people being concerned about going out to a restaurant or, you know, going out to see a show because they, they're worried about infection. So economists are keeping a really close eye on this. Um, and they are concerned, but right now they're just watching the preliminary, preliminary data and keeping an eye on the trends. That is interesting, Amy, because you are saying that there are some economists that are worried about sort of long time permanent sort of repercussions from this. I would think it would be sort of looked at as totally temporary, but you're saying it's we still have to wait and see. 
I think it's wait and see, but I think most of them are hopeful that this is going to be a short-term issue. Um, we are already seeing in New York City that cases are coming down. So there, you know, a lot of people are hoping that uh, the cases will come down quickly. People will, will be able to resume their jobs in, in normal patterns of working. So um, it's just something to keep an eye on, something that economists are concerned about. Amy Peakey from Money Watch, thank you so much. Thank you, Tanya.